is good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video this shit is not for kids today we're going to be running through my wwe survivor series 2019 predictions now of course tonight we do have nxt war games which i am very very excited about i mean my god the card is stacked we get two war games matches which i'm a little bit worried about you know i hope the crowd doesn't get too fatigued the women are going to give it a shot i'm really excited for it see how that pans out my boy finn balor is returning to the ring to take on matt riddle that match is going to be an absolute banger i cannot wait to see how he Finn Balor performs in the ring. And then we're going to find out who is taking on Adam Cole at Survivor Series between Killian Dane, Damian Priest, and Pete Dunne. So what a great matchup card that we have for tonight at TakeOver. But on Sunday night, we're going to be covering Survivor Series, which is what we're talking about here today, guys, which I am very excited about. Again, you know, you know, typically when I go into a WWE pay-per-view, I'm not near this excited. I'm actually very excited for Survivor Series. I'm probably more pumped for TakeOver because, you know, NXT is always killing it. But I, I would be lying to myself. I would be lying to you guys if I said that I wasn't hyped as shit for Survivor Series on Sunday night. I don't think there's a single match on this card that I'm, you know, dreading watching, guys. I think I'm actually excited about everything. There's an element to every single matchup that I'm excited to see or wait to pan out. This year's Survivor Series is even better, guys. NXT is thrown into the main roster, which I'm kind of, you know, worried about. You know, they have War Games, which is probably the most, besides the Elimination Chamber, probably the most devastating matchup in WWE, and then they're putting it together, and then they fight, you know, at Survivor Series the next night. I'm interested to see how they, you know, use that dynamic are they going to make that part of the storyline? I hope they do. You know, continuation. Adam Cole is literally going into the War Games match and then the next night defending the title against one of those guys. It could make for some really interesting things taking place. But with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm super excited for it. Let's get into the card and find out who the hell's going to win these things. Starting things off hot, guys, we have the Triple Threat Tag Team Match, SmackDown vs. Raw vs. NXT. We have the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, New Day, taking on the Raw Tag Team Champion, Viking Raiders, taking on the NXT Tag Team Champion, Undisputed Era, and Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. Now, with the Undisputed Era being my favorite tag team in the world, guys, I mean, this matchup right here has the makings to be definitely the match of the night. I think that this one, like, there's a lot of matches on this card that could damn be just freaking fire. But this one right here, you guys, now, I freaking I freaking love tag team wrestling. I'm a big tag team tag team wrestling advocate and so i'm really looking forward to this one i think you know between the viking raiders and the new day with their nice style of wrestling and then thrown in with the undisputed era who i again i think is the best tag team in the world right now i think this is definitely this is going to be epic and i can't wait to see what they do on the main roster i think the biggest thing with undisputed era and these nxt guys being on the main roster for survivor series for this big match on this big platform let these guys have time that is a big deal here i think that you know there's not 13 matches on the card or 11 matches on the card there's only eight matches so if they space it out correctly they can give enough time to these guys let them go in there do their work and have a freaking banger and i think that is very important to make the nxt guys look very strong i know they're going to be coming out of war games and all that but i still think it's going to be very important but if it, if it were me booking it i think i'd have uh, i think i'd have viking raiders going over here i think the viking raiders can afford to pick up this victory it won't hurt either team because the viking raiders have been dominant they should have picked up the win at crown jewel or whatever that pay-per-view was or the you know the the saudi show and the best tag team in the planet tournament or whatever that turmoil match they should have won that that would have been great to carry over into this match when this match would have added to that dominance but i'm gonna go with viking raiders even though i'm gonna be going hard for the undisputed era next up guys we have the women's five on five on five traditional survivor series triple threat elimination match first off we have team raw represented by charlotte oscar Kyrie, Sane, natalia and sarah logan taking on team smackdown featuring sasha banks nikki cross carmella dana brooke and lacey evans taking on team NXT, which is Rhea Ripley, Tony Storm, Mia Yim, Candice LeRae, and Tegan Knox. So I'm very interested to see how these matches go, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really going to be going hard for NXT here. I know that Rhea Ripley did pick up the victory over Charlotte and Sasha Banks in a very unique pinning combination with the, you know, the figure four leg lock. Very unique matchup on Friday Night SmackDown. And I'm a big supporter of Rhea Ripley, and I love all the women in this match. I think this is fantastic. I will say I think Team SmackDown's lacking a little bit with Dana Brooke in there. You know, Carmella, not the best in-ring performer. But you know what? I am excited for this match. I, it's really tough to call, but since Rhea Ripley won on SmackDown, I want to say that Team Raw is going to win here with Charlotte and Asuka and Kyrie Sane and Natalya. Uh, it just seems like Raw is probably the more stacked team out of both of them. Even though I would prefer NXT to win, I just don't see it happening. I'm going to go with Team Raw to win for the ladies' traditional 5 on 5 on 5. I hope this match isn't just a sloppy mess. You know, I hope that they can get it together. I hope it's not just women napping on the outside and taking breathers and we get a bunch of slow paced stuff. I hope they bring it. I hope they get, you know, get after it and they bring it. And I hope they do. I feel they will. And I hope they crush it. So I'm going to go with Team Raw picking up the win. 
Next up, guys, is the triple threat match between champion versus champion versus champion. Representing Raw, we have the United States champion, AJ Styles, taking on Roderick Strong, who is the North American champion, representing NXT, versus Friday Night SmackDown's representation of the Intercontinental champion, Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura obviously getting crowned with a new Intercontinental championship on Friday night. You know, I, I don't hate the title. I just don't think it's that great. You know, I think it's a good modern twist, and everybody loves it and stuff. That's cool. That's fine. That's grand. I just don't... Uh, I think I like the white strap better. I just, I don't know. I think the white strap's more clean. It's certainly a more modern looking championship, which I can appreciate. It's not an ugly title. It just is kind of meh to me. It's like, yeah, that's cool, is, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It kind of looks like the NXT championship and the 24-7 championship put together or something. I don't know. But anyways, moving on, guys. Getting into this matchup, I'm super excited for this. I think this is probably my match that I'm most excited for across the entire night. If you guys know me, if you guys follow the channel, if you guys know me personally and who my favorite wrestlers are, you guys know that I am a huge supporter of Roderick Strong, so I'm going to be going hard for Roderick Strong right here. I am going to be cheering my ass off for Roderick Strong. I really don't know how the hell this is supposed to take place. It seems like they're trying to get behind AJ. You know, they always book AJ Strong, and all three men are champions, so it's really hard to justify one of them losing, but I think the way that they're going to go about this, I think this is the best way to do it. You know, Shinsuke Nakamura just got this brand new Intercontinental Championship, and they don't want it to have an L the first time it's, you know, put in a matchup. So I, I know it's not on the line or anything, but I think they're going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura. So I'm going to give a victory to Shinsuke and SmackDown here from Fox with the W over Roderick Strong and AJ Styles. Again, I think that since I have, you know, the Viking Raiders and Team Raw winning the first two matches, I definitely have to even things out a little bit here and give it to SmackDown. And with that new Intercontinental title, it just makes sense. But I'm expecting big things out of this match. I hope they deliver, and I know they will. Roderick Strong just brings the intensity, man. That's why I love him so much, and I think that he's going to do that here with these two, especially with Shinsuke, who brings it. And you guys, you guys know AJ's one of the best in the world. So this has the makings to just be excellent, and I'm expecting nothing less from these guys. So hopefully, uh, you know, Roderick, I'm going for Roderick, but uh, I think Shinsuke will prevail. Next up, guys, is another champion versus champion versus champion match. Of course, we have the Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch taking on the NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler, taking on the SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley in a triple threat match here at Survivor Series. This is another match that I think should be fantastic. I mean, you have three good workers. You know, I'm not big on Shayna Baszler. I just feel like her style's a little bit boring, but hopefully putting her in the ring with Bayley and Becky Lynch should off-balance that boring, trash Corbin style of wrestling where it's just headlocks and, you know, power moves and just kind of just really slow pace and hopefully that is the you know the narrative here but I think if they want to put her over the way they've been building her up the last year and a half or two years or however long she's been champion I think the best thing to do right here guys is to let her pick up the victory right here have Shayna Baszler win over Becky and Bailey both I think that would be the best way to book this thing so I'm gonna go with Shayna Baszler as much as it pains me to say Becky and Bailey are probably my two favorite women on the main roster but I think they're both going to lose here and I can't stand Shayna Baszler but I think it'd be the right move as far as building her up the way they have I mean, you might as well continue it. Have her pick up the victory here. It'd be a huge victory for it, building on that momentum, and it's just a good way to do so. So I'm going to go with Shayna Baszler picking up the win, and that will be NXT's first victory here. So the score right now is Raw 2, NXT 1, SmackDown 1. Next up, guys, is our NXT Championship match between Adam Cole taking on Pete Dunn, Killian Dane, or Damian Priest. Obviously, the winner of that triple threat match at TakeOver War Games will be the one that challenges Adam Cole the following night at Survivor Series for the NXT Championship. And we don't have a Damian Priest figure yet, so I just have Killian Dane and Pete Dunn right here, but I think out of these two, it is going to be Pete Dunn. I'm a big Pete Dunn supporter. I love Pete Dunn, and I think this is the best way to do it, man. You know, I think he's the only babyface out of the triple threat match, and I think that it makes the most sense. I think this will be an epic clash. This is the matchup I would like to see at Survivor Series. I just think it will be the best dynamic. Two of my favorites in NXT, along with Roderick Strong going head-to-head. -head. I mean, my God. I think this would be a match that would absolutely fit the Survivor Series card very well, and I would certainly be cheering my butt off for either, man. I think this would be great. It'd be really cool to see Pete Dunne be crowned NXT champion, but I do like that, you know, Undisputed Era is totally draped in gold right now. I think they need to continue that for a bit more. So, regardless of who wins the triple threat match at War Games, I think that Adam Cole will ultimately retain the NXT championship. I think it just makes the most sense at this juncture. I don't see him dropping the title anytime soon. So, for that reasoning, I love Pete Dunne to death. I, I absolutely am a supporter of Killian Dane as well, but Adam Cole, whoever he takes on, will be picking up the victory here. So, after Survivor Series, 
series is finished, Undisputed Era will still be draped in all gold. That's it, guys. It is the No Holds Barred WWE Championship match between Brock Lesnar and Rey Mysterio. Now, this is a matchup that's honestly, you know, we, we were trying to go back and forth. We were like, are we going to get Brock versus The Fiend versus Adam Cole? Like, a lot of people were speculating on that. I honestly would have appreciated that match. I think that match would have been crazy. I would have loved to see how that took place, how they booked that matchup. But we did not get that. We are getting our Rey Mysterio storyline with Brock, following him beating the hell out of him, Dominic, you know, the Cain Velasquez story and all of that. Brock Lesnar beat him up. Uh, he's supposedly out with injury and he may not be able to even return to WWE, which is unfortunate for him. I'm not a big Cain Velasquez supporter, but I hate to see somebody go down like that. Uh, I think that we were probably, there's going to be, I think it's going to be two, one of two ways, or possibly three ways this match can go. But uh, first of all, it's a no holds barred match. I think that one of these ways is Brock Lesnar can come out here and kill Rey Mysterio in three seconds. It could literally be a five second squash match where he beats the hell out of Rey and it's over. Number two, it'll be where he beats the hell out of Rey for 10 minutes and then Rey Mysterio mounts a comeback, but it's not enough and Brock wins. Or number three, Cain Velasquez comes out, costs Brock the championship, and Rey Mysterio becomes your new WWE champion. Now, those are my three options. I don't think it goes any other way than that, but I hope that we get a good match. I don't want a squash match. I don't want anything like that. I want a good, entertaining match between David and Goliath right here. I think that's the way they should do it. Kind of like they did AJ, kind of like they did Finn, kind of like they did Daniel Bryan. Similar, but more creative. I would like to see that take place, but I don't really care who wins this match. I'm just intrigued to see how the result comes to play, what happens at the matchup, and everything like that. So, I'm going to predict that Brock Lesnar wins, but you never know with uh, with all the stuff going down. But I'm going to predict that Brock Lesnar does retain his WWE Championship over Rey Mysterio. Next up, guys, we have our Blue Universal Championship match between The Fiend Bray Wyatt taking on Daniel Bryan. And to be honest with you guys, this one is going to be tough to call. Um, not as far as predictions. I think that Bray Wyatt is most certainly going to win. I think he's going to probably squash Daniel Bryan. This is another match that could be a squash. Both main championship matches could be squashes. That's just a fair warning to you. Uh, that, that might even be a spoiler. Shout out Paul Heyman. However, uh, the way they the way they booked Bray Wyatt, it's very challenging. You know, you don't know what to expect because at Hell in a Cell, they kind of booked their cell. They're not kind of. They booked, they absolutely booked themselves into the shittiest corner I've ever seen in my entire life. The way they booked this man into the corner, they made, they, they made him look like freaking Jason Voorhees, for Christ's sake. He, he freaking gets pounded to death, and then he gets the hell up. I mean, my God, like, it was totally uncalled for. They definitely deserved all the boos that came down on WWE after that. They just booked themselves into a corner, giving him the Universal Championship match, and then pulling the carpet out from under him, and then letting him win on Halloween night, and then now he's fighting somebody else. It's just, I don't know, outside of, in, like, in a regular singles match, how in the hell are you supposed to beat this man after Seth Rollins? Rollins bludgeoned him in the skull with hammers and stuff, and it still didn't keep him down. I don't know, Brad. It's got to be a squash. I don't know how they even handled this. I don't even know how Daniel Bryan's supposed to get offense in. So there's that. But anyways, guys, I, I'm definitely going with The Fiend to win. I'm just interested to see how they book it without being illogical and without being inconsistent following their booking from Hell in a Cell. But I'm going with The Fiend to win. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Men's Traditional Survivor Series 5-on-5-on-5 five 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 Triple Threat Elimination Match between Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Now, there's a lot to unpack with this match. This is probably the match that, uh, outside of the triple threat match, I'm the most looking forward to. I mean, you have so much talent smacked into this match, guys. And, uh, you know, on Team NXT, I do have Matt Riddle, Finn Balor, and Tommaso Ciampa here. I know that Finn Balor most likely will not be on Team NXT. I, I'm pretty positive of that. I think they're probably going to put Matt Riddle in there, Ciampa, Keith Lee, Dominic Djokovic, and then they have that final member of the War Games match who is not announced just yet that we're going to find out about tonight. So, it's really, really hard to find out. It could be Johnny Gargano. I know he's supposed to be injured. I'm not sure. Pete Dunne's not going to be in it because he has a match, obviously. Killian Dane, again, they just fought. I don't see him being in there. Damian Priest, I guess, is an option. But they haven't given us the NXT team, so it's all up to speculation at this point. However, this match is absolutely epic on paper. I just cannot wait to see all these guys interact in the ring. It's going to be similar to the Royal Rumble where we have all the different styles and surprises and stuff intertwangling in the match. I, again, I don't think Finn Balor will be in it, but I put him in there just to have a body. I mean, I guess anything's possible, but but I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be in this match. Especially, like, Matt Riddle and Finn Balor aren't going to be on the same team. So it'll be one or the other is basically what I'm saying. But I think in this matchup, Team Raw is absolutely stacked. Uh, team NXT is obviously stacked. I mean, t Team SmackDown, I mean, you have freaking Trash Corbin, so what do you do? I mean, they're obviously not going to win. But I wouldn't be shocked if Team SmackDown won. I'm going to go with Team
Team NXT to win. I think that Team NXT is going to win this one because I have a feeling that Triple H or Kevin Owens or somebody is going to turn their back on the team there and help Team NXT win. Maybe Triple H and Shawn Michaels thrust them to win or something. I don't know what the whole case is, but I think that Team NXT is going to win, and uh, that is what I'm predicting for this match. I just want it to be fun, guys. I mean, it's, this is this is another thing I want to add. I hope you guys are listening right now. They need to add something to this match where it makes it, they make it, you know, intriguing. There needs to be something at stake. There needs to be something on the line here, not just brand supremacy. Like, what the shit is that? Who cares about that shit? Nobody cares about that. Who cares about brand supremacy? Like, I remember back in the day, like, it, whatever team won, uh, the whole team would get to control uh, the, uh, Monday Night Raw for a week or SmackDown for a week. Like, I remember, I think it was Survivor Series 2004. Chris Benoit's team and, you know, all them, Randy Orton and all them. Edge, I think, was on that team. They defeated Team SmackDown, and since they defeated Team SmackDown, each one of them, each week, got to control Raw for a whole night. So they were the GM, and they got to book the matches and, you know, help themselves. It was a really sick idea. I think they need to do something like that, whether it had to do with the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, do something where the brand has something on the line, and I think that gives it more intrigue for the fans or something, or maybe everybody gets a title shot or something. They just need to do something, man. I think it'd make it a lot more fun and interesting for the fans to watch and make it, you know, something at stake. But I'm really looking forward to this match, man. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be epic sauce. I cannot wait. This weekend is going to be great, especially tonight with War Games coming up. We have freaking Survivor Series tomorrow night, and then we have freaking MDT Hell's Gate. I mean, my God, at the wrestling, man. It's just exciting times. But anyways, guys, I think that is going to do it for my Survivor Series 2019 predictions. Again, really looking forward to the show. I hope it lives up to the hype. I hope that I'm, you know, intrigued with all the outcomes. I hope that the matches are entertaining. I hope that, you know, I have some OMG moments. Just really, really looking forward to the show, and I hope it does not disappoint. War Games tonight. Hope it's freaking fire. If you guys missed MDT Live episode 15, please go check it out. But I think that is going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Please comment down below what your predictions are as well as what you think of mine. If you stayed all the way to this point, hit me with a My Damn Survivor Series down in the comment section below. You will get an automatic heart and like from yours truly. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at My Damn Toys and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.